My first attempt to cross into Transnistria was unsuccessful. I passed the first checkpoint, which was a manual barrier operated by an old man who asked me where I was going. I thought, easy, I'm in. But a few kilometers further, I reached the border, the actual border between Moldova and Transnistria. They checked my passport, asked a lot of questions, and refused to let me in because I didn't have physical copies of my car insurance. So I had to travel back to Chisinau, the capital of Moldova, and find somewhere to sleep. And in the morning, I went to the insurance broker where they printed, stamped, and signed my insurance documents. Ooh, look at that brutalist building over here. This is the one of the main squares in Chisinau. If you thought Moldova didn't have so many bus stops, look at the mosaic behind, behind me. It's so cool. On the way to Pridnestrovie, I marveled at the Soviet bus stops Moldova still uses and their beautiful mosaics. I was heading towards the Dniester River, the border between the two countries. In March 2022, ah, okay. the Council of Europe recognized Transnistria as a territory of Moldova currently occupied by Russia. At the time this video was made, Russia still hasn't withdrawn its troops from Transnistria since 1992. Near the checkpoints, I saw Russian tanks, officially there for peacekeeping. This is the border between Moldova and the so-called Pridnestrovia. This is the river Dniester. The border checkpoint was indeed real. They checked my passport, asked where I was going, checked my car documents, and I paid five euros for the road tax. Everything was paper-based, and the border crossing seemed antiquated. I was given a migration card, which was a paper slip like those store receipts, allowing me to stay into Transnistria for two days. And here we are, PMR. We finally made it. I can't believe that I'm here because it's been so difficult to, to reach this country. On the way to Tiraspol, I passed a few checkpoints, many of which seemed unattended, presumably ready to be used in case of any national security threat, where they would filter the cars coming in and out of the region. The roads were quite bad, but I didn't expect anything different. Look at this gate, it has the communist star, and the Russian flag. Wow. That is a big statement. Tiraspol is the perfect time capsule, a place that never wanted to leave the Soviet Union. It's a proud display of hammer and sickle everywhere you look, and it's a self-proclaimed communist country. No doubt that all the communist symbols, many of which have been restored and made as recently as a couple of years ago, are a statement that Transnistria is in Moldova and that there is a real separation between the two regions. This is not going to be another this country doesn't exist video. It's going to be more like we're, we're back, we're literally back in the Soviet Union because I doubt this place ever left the Soviet Union. This is Tiraspol, the capital city of Pridnestrovia. So here it is. Not my original idea to come to this store for sure. Что ли девушка Юя прощает навсегда кондуктор не пишет. Here we go. This is the Pridnestrovsky Republic Bank, which is the central bank of this little republic of Pridnestrovia. This is a monument to the uh, Pridnestrovian rubble, which has been in circulation since. 1994. 580 for about 50 euros or something like that. So there it goes. That's what it looks like. Pridnestrovian rubles. They have their own currency here in Pridnestrovia. Look at that. 
Tell me this is not a real country. The supermarkets here are quite ordinary and for the most part the only local produce here is meat, dairy, eggs and alcohol. The other products are mostly imported from Moldova and Belarus. On the day I got detained and interrogated, I decided to drive close to the Transnistrian Ukrainian border. On the way there, I saw an abandoned building and I thought I should check it out. As you will see, this was a terrible idea. Slava Rossi. This is a very pro-Russian message. If your gut feeling tells you that you shouldn't go in an abandoned building in a country that doesn't exist entirely on your own while you're also in a wheelchair and you decide to still go there, don't be surprised when this happens. Here we are in an abandoned factory here in Transistia. Look at this. I don't think we can get too far. Can we? Right. Let's see what we can find over here. It just seems to me less and less believable that this was a factory. There's a hole here. Do you think I should try to get in? There's not much going on in that room. This was definitely the bathroom. Over here it says, in case of emergency, call 1124 one, Militia, Ambulance, this is Fire Department. So, I don't know. These are some old shoes, wow. Look at this. Mm. Interesting. I might take a wild guess and say that somebody, somebody was sleeping here. A guy started to swear and yell at me in Russian, so I had to make a quick getaway to the car. Just got caught. You don't want something to happen to you in Transnistria, do you? But I don't either. One last look. Let's go, let's go. He was following me and I tried to explain that I only wanted to take pictures and take, check the building out, but I didn't let that put me off, however, and I found another abandoned building a few kilometers away and had a quick look inside. However, it wasn't anything interesting. So I carried on heading east and the towns and villages I was passing through were depressing. They were cold, grim and poor, just like they would have been in Soviet times. Every single place here felt like a dead end. Pretty much all the residents were middle-aged or old, I didn't see many children or young people around. Transnistria is a poor country with very limited freedom of movement. Its passports aren't even recognized by other states and it has censorship laws that put you in jail for up to three years if you publicly criticize the Russian presence in the country or the way the government runs it. I stopped in the town of Chobuch where I saw a huge statue of Lenin. <laughs> Moldova, 
Oare ar fi mai bine pentru, pentru Prinestrovie să fie recunoscută ca, ca Republică da. independentă da. sau să se alăture da. Rusiei, de exemplu? Sau cum? E, Care ar fi soluția? Nu, nu vreau eu să spun că uh, noi ne-am ales viitorul nostru. La noi a fost referendum. Uh, tineretul nu, nu, nu putem să impunem punctul nostru da. de vedere. Uh, toți privesc undeva în Europa. Așa mai departe, uite acolo, uite acolo. Dar și nu suntem noi acolo? <laughs> I finally arrived at a Kuchurgan power plant. And the honest reason I came here was to check out a beach on the reservoir people told me about. And most importantly, to photograph the Lenin monument and the mosaic just outside a power plant. This is where it all began. This is Moldavskaya power, power plant. Look at this. This is the power plant. The lady told me off for filming. But look at this. With a Lada, of course, parked in front of it. A guy quickly approached me What's and there? asked me to delete the photos I made. I asked why and I deleted the photos. This wasn't enough, however. As the power plant was right on the border with Ukraine, the security guard called the border police, which quickly came and blocked my car with theirs, so I couldn't leave. They began asking me a lot of questions, including what university I attended, which seemed largely irrelevant to the situation. This was the only video I managed to make until the interrogation was over. As I came out of the restroom where I made a video, they questioned me about who was I talking to, whether I made any phone calls. One of the officers, dressed in plain clothes, got into my car and told me to drive to Tiraspol, to the address of the Ministry for State Security. There I was escorted inside by some people who said, exactly in these words, that they are basically the KGB. They made it clear that I was not free to leave. They took my phone and asked for the passcode to access it. My phone was put on airplane mode, taken away and only given back to me at the end of the interrogation, about two or three hours later. The interrogation was very comprehensive. They asked me where I was staying, why I had Ukrainian stamps on my passport, and even asked me what were my opinions on Russia and the current situation in Ukraine, letting me know that they are on the Russian side. So I had to think carefully because everything I was saying could be used against me. This wasn't small talk. It was part of the interrogation. I should mention, however, that they were all nice and polite during the interrogation. And at some point, I even started chatting to one of the security guards. He was a guy in his 20s, told me he's working on, on learning Romanian and hopes that one day he'll be able to afford getting a Romanian passport so he could travel to all of the countries I told him I traveled to. After they deleted all the videos and photos from my phone, they eventually gave it back to me. Needless to say, they forgot to delete them from the iPhone's trash folder, so I was able to recover them later. So we just left. We just left this, um, this office. We've been interrogated to hell. So good to be free. Like, I really thought we were gonna spend a couple of days in some kind of prison or something. As I took one last shot outside, I saw a trooper coming towards me from the building where they interrogated me and said something in Russian I didn't understand, so I just drove off. I went straight to the apartment and got some sleep, enjoying the freedom once again. 
It goes without saying, this video will get me in real trouble if I ever went back to Transnistria, which surely wouldn't happen, at least not in the foreseeable future. I would still advise anyone to visit Transnistria, but don't do irresponsible things like I did, and don't get in trouble.